welcome to a new edition of our show titled Speak of Africa. For our show of today, we're going to focus on the war on terror, the US-led war on terror. Since September 11, 2001, after the attack on the World Trade Center, the United States decided to wage a full-scale war on terror. Before that, the US had never really experienced any serious disaster on the scale of September 11. Much of the terror that has been happening has been taking place overseas, especially in the Middle East and Europe, which was close to the Middle East. But for the first time, Americans who thought they were really immune to the war on, on terror were really surprised that their homeland was attacked. So the US decided now to become the main driver of this war after the war hit the United States. It hit the Pentagon, it hit the World Trade Center, and it hit a few in Pennsylvania. So with this war on terror, the US made a U-turn and took upon itself to really lead this war effort. So far, when we look at what has been happening, we really want to help the, the viewers to understand this war. On the financial side, we think the U.S. has really done a really good job. But the U.S. strategy is failing. It's failing because most of the U.S. policy makers have not really understood the problem with this war. They've done a good job in focusing on the Middle East and also focusing on Afghanistan. But what they have not really understood is there is a new theater of the war on terror. And this theater is Africa, the African continent. So far, it looks like the U.S. government is ignoring Africa, but we say you are ignoring Africa at your own peril because Africa is really at the center of this new war on terror. Things have shifted. If the stage of the U.S. war on terror used to be the Middle East, today that stage is Africa. It's the African continent. The earlier the U.S. realizes this, it will be good for the U.S. national security strategy. When we look at what had just happened a few hours ago, in Kenya, three weeks ago, there was an attack by Al-Shabaab. This attack is not really an isolated attack. Even this morning, the U.S. has been warning its embassy officials in Kenya to expect more attacks from Al-Shabaab. So you have new stirrings of terror coming from the motherland. So we think it is time for the U.S. to take Africa seriously. Instead of looking at Africa as the receptacle of dead aid, we want the U.S. to make Africa into a serious partner. So far, the partnerships which the U.S. has been forging with Africa are wrong because the U.S. has been relying on dictators who are really the cause of the terror that is wreaking havoc on the motherland. You look at what is happening in the northeast in Nigeria. Elections are taking place on February 16. But we see that there were signs that in the Northeast, it's difficult for the politicians to really campaign peacefully because the area is not secure. There is a lot of insecurity in that area. Okay? You look at Cameroon. What is happening? The U.S. has dedicated a lot of resources to help this African nation stem the tide of terror, Boko Haram. But what is happening? The big man in that country instead of focusing on the war effort dealing with Boko Haram, is diverting the resources to fight anglophones in the northwest and southwest provinces of the country. Okay? So his main focus is not the war on terror. He himself is become the terrorist. Okay? $250 to $6,000. Quick tax refund advance made easy. It's tax season 2019. The Christmas and New Year holidays are over. Everybody's talking about the PJ Tax Service, the new kid in town on H&R Block's Block. Why? Money, money, money. Spread the good news. Quick tax refund advance is here. It's big, bigger than ever. Put big money in your pocket fast. PJ Tax Service. Nobody gets your tax money back faster. Instantly, quickly, and immediately. Three tax refund disbursement choices for you in less than 24 hours. Visa e-card, paper check, and direct deposit. 
Get your money back without delays. PG Tax Service has your back. It is your money, so get it now. PG Tax Service, you like the way we do your taxes. PJ Tax Service, you feel like a lottery or a sweepstake winner. Act now. Call 301-593-4879 or 301-593-4897. Or come to our office, 11207A Lockwood Drive, Silver Spring, Maryland, 20901. Or you can visit us online, www.pjtaxservice.com. Then you look at chart. As we were taping the show this morning, there is news that French fighter jets are attacking rebel positions around the border between Chad and Libya. So the French have ostensibly decided now to become part of the challenge to the leadership of President Idris Deby. President Idris Deby has been in power for quite a long time, and we've shared his profile on this show many times with you. But the problem is, this individual is monopolizing power. He's a strong man who doesn't want other people to really enjoy power in that country. As a result, the people have decided to attack him and challenge him so that they can unseat him from the seat of power. So this is creating a whole lot of problems, and the French have become his allies. But even with that, the rebels are fighting, and they really want to take the fight to N'Djamena. So because of this, we want the U.S. to understand that the partner it has chosen to fight the war on terror are not really the right partners. They are the wrong partners because these same people are the ones who are really creating this war on terror. Why is terror happening in Africa today the way it is going on now? It is because, just as they say, this is good soil for terrorists. There is so much violence, there is so much instability, so there is no rule of law. If the U.S. only wants to stem the tide of terror in the motherland before it reaches the United States, then the United States needs to come up with a smarter strategy. The strategy that the United States is using today is dumb. So we want to share the best strategy the U.S. can use to combat terror. As I say, we start with consciousness, conscious existence. Already, when you look at what is happening in this part of the world, we see what Karl Marx used to call the dialectic. You have the thesis and you have the antithesis. On the one hand, you have the bourgeoisie. They seize power and they have all the wealth. Then on the other hand, you have the people who have no money. We we'll call them the proletariats. So they want to fight. So there's a constant conflict between these people who have resources and wealth versus the people who do not have. So there's this constant conflict going on. When the people who are in power have all the wealth, the people who have nothing, they are disaffected. And most of them are youth. They have nothing, so have not been to school. So they really long for a better life. So if the U.S. really wants to deal with this problem, it needs to really understand the problem, the way a medical doctor understands a problem. You look at the diagnosis before you come up with the procedure. But so far, the U.S. has been relying too much on militarization. And we think Militarization alone is not going to solve this problem. The U.S. needs a better understanding of what is happening in the motherland. Because when you look at the map of the African continent today, you see that it has become a map of terror. You have many actors. You have Boko Haram. You have Al-Shabaab. You have ISIS. Okay? So all these actors are playing together in this field where they've made it to become a transnational and an international theater of terror. So much is happening. You have tra trafficking, drug trafficking, you have kidnapping. So it is really a good soil for people who want to do bad things. That's how they are making a living. People who cannot really make a living distantly are using terror now as a means of livelihood. So the United States needs to understand the dynamics that are working themselves out in the motherland. So don't just make friends only with the presidents of those countries because you're making a mistake. You need to look at the fundamental problems. What is really causing terror to germinate like plants in a farm? It's because there is so much youth disaffection. The people feel that they are being challenged by the West. 
and the people feel the Western powers are conniving with dictators. Okay? So they feel like the Western powers are not on their side. So to stem the tide of terrorism, we need to come up with a new global policy. And this policy needs to look at three elements. We need to look at the political elements, the social elements, and the economic elements. On the political side, the United States needs to change its game, okay? The United States needs to make sure that on this continent, there are free and fair elections. There is a rule of law. Whenever there is no rule of law, the environment is rife for terror because the people who are in power terrorize the people who have no power. As a result, there is the need for revenge. The people want to revenge the death of their relatives. So this fuels ongoing conflict. So instead of the U.S. looking at Africa as a receptacle of dead aid, the U.S. needs to start working with those countries to even force them to implement democratic forms of government so that they can have free and fair elections. When you lose the election, you should go to the sunset. You should not steal it and stay in power the way Paul Bia has done, the way other guys have done also in Africa. If we can do this, it will really help to really get terror on the low side, the social side. We need to have more stability. What makes Africa really unstable is because the people really have a need for enjoyment of life. But they cannot really enjoy life where they are because the environment has a lot of chaos. How can we eradicate chaos in some of these societies? We need to address the way these people have been living in, in most indigenous societies in the past. So they want to live the way they, they were living with their ancestors. So they want, they want to live in peace. Whenever they cannot live in peace, it creates problems. So the U.S. needs to work with most of these African countries to create stable environments, okay? Stable environments where the people can live freely. If this happens, you will have less terror. Life insurance money secrets of millionaires and billionaires exposed. Discover how America's rich and famous exploit these arcane tools to build fabulous wealth. Why should these big white guys have all the fun? Let Prince Ojong, the celebrity author of The Miraculous Millionaire, show you the little understood life insurance way to riches. Are you still doubting the good things that life insurance can do for you? Trust strategies, estate planning, 401k rollover, annuity contract, cash value, education funding, executive benefits, income protection, life protection, living benefits, mortgage protection, tax-free retirement? Think and grow rich with life insurance. Your amazing journey to wealth begins by calling Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. Then on the economic side, a lot of African youth are disaffected. Because when you look at what is happening in Africa, there is the interplay of three forces. We've always talked about Africa as a triple heritage continent. You have Christianity, you have Islam, and of course you have indigenous beliefs or religion. All these three forces are playing themselves out to create a new reality in Africa. So the Christians tend to like dominate in some areas. So the Muslims feel like they are being marginalized. Their voices are not being heard. They feel that the Christians are encroaching on their way of life. So they want to fight back. So if we want peace to return to this part of the world, we need to make the people feel like they have the freedom of religion, the freedom to worship their, the religious faith that they believe in. If they are Christians, they can worship freely as Christians. If they are Muslims, the government should encourage them to worship in their mosque, okay? They should not feel like the Christians are dominating them. The Christians don't want them to exercise their faith. When that happens, it creates conflict. Because when you even look at what is happening in Kenya and Somalia, the, the Muslims leave Somalia and move into Kenya to create havoc because they are targeting Western institutions. So this should not really be. So the Western world needs to start changing its way of doing things. Do not make yourself feel like these people are my enemies. No, embrace the Muslims and bring them to the fore. Treat them with humanity. When you do this, they will not be behaving as violently the way they are behaving. Because right now, they feel like they are not recognized as human beings. Look at their humanity. Treat them as human beings. Treat them with respect. Get most of the governments to include the Muslims in decision-making. 
Whenever the Muslims feel like they're marginalized, then they are forced now to behave violently. If this continues, we will keep having more and more terrorism in, in the continent. And when we look at the way things are going now, a lot of the times, the political leaders are the ones who really engender this terrorism. When they kill your brother or they kill your sister, you want a revenge. And for the most part, a lot of Christians tend to become a docile. But with the Muslims, they really take their faith seriously. So it looks like whenever you do something, they want a revenge. So whenever they revenge, it creates a whole lot of tension. So instead of the Trump administration thinking that the war on terror is receding, it is not. We think that Africa has become the hotbed of terrorism. Most of the factors that engender this terrorism are everywhere for people to see. But it looks like the Trump administration needs to be educated on what are the causes of these problems. And we think that by watching our show today, the Trump administration will get a lot of good ideas to use to implement the counter-terrorism strategy. Already, the anti-money laundering is working well. The U.S. is able to track the financial transactions of a lot of terrorists. But we need to take this fight to the ground. We need to become the friends of the Muslims. Don't isolate them and treat them like enemies. We need to look for people who are in this community who can work with us. We need to make them feel that they are human beings. If we can do some of these things, then terror is really going to recede and we'll have a more peaceful African continent. This is very, very important because without security, not much can happen in terms of development. So security is a sine qua non. Before you can have any development, you need to have security. So when people talk about security in Africa, development in Africa, we say security first. Because already, as we see it, you don't have much security. When you don't have security, you cannot have free and fair elections. In Cameroon, for example, because of insecurity in the Northwest and Southwest provinces, even a big dictator like Mr. Bia could not really have free uh, elections. He could not hold elections in those provinces because there was so much chaos. So he had to just declare himself the winner in those two provinces, even though the people did not vote for him. Okay? So the election now tended just to be a, a charade. Okay? <laughs> Nobody really voted for him, but he won anywhere. So people did not vote in those provinces, but he said they voted. So it's like, even ghosts can vote. So when you have such an environment, it engenders animosity and the people want to revenge. You may feel that these people are very small, but as Karl Marx says it, history has always been marked by a struggle between the half and the half-nots. The halves are the bourgeoisie, the half-nots are the proletariats. So the proletariats always want to overthrow the bourgeoisie so that they can take over power. And when you look at most African countries, what is really happening is the group that has no power is fighting to get power. When they get power, they start behaving the same way the other guys were behaving. So the solution to this is for the U.S. to come up with a new national strategy. Okay? What are the interests of the U.S.? We like the fact that the Trump administration is looking at transactional politics. What do we get in return? If we can implement a better counter terrorism strategy is going to reap a lot of dividends for the U.S. Right now, the U.S. is spending a lot of money giving dictators to put in their bank accounts. This money needs to trickle down so that the average person in Africa can be benefiting from this U.S. largesse. But so far, this money ends up in the pockets of only politicians. And it's the same thing that is happening. A few days ago, we saw that China has cancelled the deaths of Paul Bia Cameroon. But they did not make this news public. It didn't take long. The people knew that, oh, Paul Bia has worked a deal with China to cancel the deal, the debts that the country has. So why do you think China canceled this debt? Is it for nothing? No. Bia had to give something in return. There's always a quid pro quo. You give something in order to win something. So we want all of this to end. So in summary, we are looking for a situation where we can get terrorism under control. First, the U.S. needs to recognize the fact that Africa has become the hotbed, the haven of terrorism. And the main actors of terrorism are African dictators, because they are the ones really benefiting from this terror. They are diverting resources that were meant to be used to fight terror for their own benefits. So the U.S. needs to come up with a new strategy that is threefold. 
political, social, and economic. On the political front, we want the rule of law to be exercised in the African continent, and the U.S. can really enforce this because they have the power to do it. On the social side, we need the, the countries to be a little bit more stable so that there's peace. On the economic side, the young population needs to really stay at home and work. They need to have a future. They need to have a bright future. So instead of dead wood politicians who are too old ruling those countries, the youth need to be given the chance to also rule the country. Look at, for example, France. France is an old republic, but it was ruled by a very young guy, Emmanuel Macron. Look at America. Barack Obama was a young guy, but he was able to rule the country, which is a very big democracy. So if these big democracies can be ruled by young people, why is it that most African countries do not want their youth to run the, the country? That's a question inquiring minds want to know. And with this, we would like to end our show. And we thank you very much for watching. So we're telling you, subscribe to this show. Some of you are telling us that, oh, you don't get uh, our videos. You don't get the videos because you've not subscribed. So we're asking you to go to our channel, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Subscribe to these videos and also share these videos with your friends and family. Again, I'm going to let you know that we're also in the tax business. Right now is a tax season. We're busy preparing taxes and we want to help you to be able to prepare your taxes. So call the number 240-350-1131 and we'll be very, very happy to help you prepare your taxes and we'll be giving deals for people who are viewers of our show. If you subscribe, that's even better. When you subscribe, you'll be getting this show every time we upload a new video on YouTube. If you do not subscribe, you will not know when we have a new video. So please, make it your agenda. Every time you watch this show, subscribe and share it with your friends because we want to take this message of African liberation far and wide. We want Africans to join this movement and we want even foreigners who are not Africans to also join this movement because it is in the U.S. national interest to make Africa free and fair. Okay? If we can do this, I think we really have a, a peaceful world. Thank you very much. Selling a service or a product? Need buyers? Use the African Nation TV as a channel to reach many viewers. Act now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. Act today.